What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my, another review for The Mandalorian, and in this case it's going to be a quick recap of season two of the episode, or of the season, and just kind of where we went and where I expect us to go from here. So overall the season picks up where the, or season two picks up where the first season left off. The Mandalorian is on out on his task to find other Mandalorians to help him on his quest to, or task to find other Jedi like the child who we now know as Grogu. So while most of the episodes were on um, point as far as the mission, and for the most part on point, um, the second and third episodes as far as the fish lady go didn't really feel relevant aside from introducing kind of where the universe is as with um, the New Republic. And the first episode was really served as a way to introduce Boba Fett as being alive and kind of have that nice throwback with their Sarlacc but overall it was really an episode to get Boba Fett to interact with the Mandalorian um, and then the rest of the season kind of fell into place from there so we have the Mandalorian meeting up with Ahsoka and having uh, more focus on the mission to get to um, the Force-sensitive, or Tython, I think it was, what, the Force-sensitive planet, which ultimately led to um, Luke Skywalker finding them on Moff Gideon's ship. So overall, I think, or I found that the season, in retrospect, served as a way to not only fin help the Mandalorian finish his task, um, but also as a side way to introduce the Boba Fett spin-off series, but ultimately set up the Mandalorian universe where we're going to have the Mandalorian either get into a battle with um, Bo-Katan as far as who should lead Mandalore, or set up the power struggle and change the, power, the, the political stru structure of Mandalore where um, Bo-Katan's family line is no longer going to be, going to be in a leadership role and uh, the Mandalorian is going to be the one to bring everyone together because he's he seems to have a singular focus as far as his task and find people who can help him. So this seems like it's going to be one of those things where the next season is going to be more about the world building of the Mandalorians. So whether they actually rebuild that, their world in the next season or not, I think we're going to have a, a reunification of or we're going to see an attempt, at, or further attempt at the reunification of the Mandalorian race, where they reunify the clans, whether it's um, Bo, the Kree's clan, which is I think, which is Bo Katan's family, the Fets, who may or may not be reintroduced as a way of forgiveness of what he's been doing, that he understands the, uh, where their family structure is, and maybe there's a reason why he was exiled, or because he can prove his standing of the Fett name in the Mandalorian universe, there's a reason for him to be there. And Din, as the Mandalorian, is going to represent the changing of the guards in the Mandalorian universe, where he, because he has this unique ability to lead, he can ultimately become Mandal. I think it's Mandalore the Ultimate, or Mandalore the Great, the uh, leader of the Mandalorian people who represent the traditional old ways of the race to help rebuild the planet, but they can do it in a more modern sense where they're no longer the conquering, um, or they're no longer a conquering race, but a race of people that helps others and kind of lives in a world, they live in the galaxy as a whole now where rather than being bounty hunters, they have, they can still be the strong society that they are, but go back to their roots, kind of, so to speak. Kind of like a good version of Thanos, where he, instead of con trying to cut the universe in half, they're c trying to rebuild their people and go back to their roots, but rather than conquering, they're more of... Uh, they're still that mil they still have their military styles, I guess, but they're, it's, I guess, in a more modern, more welcoming way. So rather than conquering, they... Um, introduce more balance into their society however it may be and while we would hope for Thrawn to show up it seems like based on the information we have now because of an ah Ahsoka spinoff Thrawn might show up there but I do anticipate whether it's the next season or season 4 where they do a crossover event where 
for example, in season three, we have the Mandalorians ultimately by the end of the season having rebuilt their planet because they realize that the Empire lied and their planet is hospitable. So they reunite the clans, rebuild their society, and then based on the actions of what happens in the Ahsoka series with her and Thrawn, Thrawn or they end, it ends up leading to a war, the Mandalorian Chiss War or the Chiss Mandalorian War uh, where they ultimately ban- battle it out and it's a matter of mind over will. So, something along those lines, but based on what we see here, now that the Mandalorian's task has been completed, I think it's t- going to be more of a universe... Well, this was still... This was like a stepping stone to universe building. The next season is going to be all about the universe building, and the book of Boba Fett is going to be a tie-in to show how he either ends up on Tatooine in Jabba's palace or what he does... Uh, while in Jabba's palace going forward to build either a Mandalorian base instead of a hut base or if he goes back goes out on his own and while he's split from Bo-Katan and the Mandalorian they allow him to use Tatooine as his base of operations or his own planet to start his own um, new Mandalore or the Fett uh, world of Fett or something along those lines. So that's all there is for this review. So overall, I want to say it was pretty good. It was nice having those callbacks as far as um, in the first episode with Knights of the Old Republic, um, some of the cloning facilities to build kind of a prelude to what we see in um, the sequel trilogy with um, Snoke and Emperor Palpatine. It was good to see Ahsoka and Luke Skywalker. Um, And overall, it was a good... um, series and even and that's aside from the idea that a lot of the dark or the dark trooper concept looked a lot like the iron man suit or the iron legion so i just thought it was a nifty chest they didn't go overboard with it and it, even though it looks like iron man it kind of fit in this star wars universe as something that they could create as far as a more uh, powerful fighting droid that is hard to keep, um, defeat because it has a best car skin, good AI, and all of that good stuff. So that's all there is for this review. So um, I just wanted to get that out there now that we're a few days removed from the season finale and um, I wanted to give my early thoughts of what might see going forward from here knowing what we know now. So um, I'm kind of revising what we saw it before as far as the whole idea between Thrawn and when we will see Luke Skywalker or any other Jedi to this is going to be more universe building and we're going to go into a conflict with the Chiss or somehow integrate Thrawn based on what we see in the Ahsoka um, series. So that's all there is for this review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, as far as upcoming content, um, look out for Wonder Woman 1984 review, um, and then a surprise review for um, year-end as far as an Android app review. Um, if you're a patron, you already have information on um, that review. And then as a little bit of a bonus review here, um, I was gonna, or I found out that Lost is streaming on IMDb TV for free with ads, so I decided to watch the pilot to see how it is, and overall it was a good episode um, to start off the series. Got me intrigued enough to want to watch it, but I got to looking at the number of seasons and episodes, so once my Stargate watch through is done, I might give the first season a watch. Or I might give it a few more, give it a few more episodes to see if it's something that I would continue to be interested in. Cause I, think, I want to say it's like twenty to twenty-four episodes per season, so um, that's almost another. It'll probably take me a good few months to a year to watch it, unless there's a key episodes thing uh, guide like with Stargate SG One. But I just want to show that overall it seemed like it was a good show, good story and character development. Um, no one can trust anybody, but they all have to work together. And they're all on this mysterious island that has weird creatures and a polar bear for some reason. So um, intriguing enough. So we'll see if um, a few more episodes will pique my interest. So that's all for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time.